Buzzheads. Welcome to another episode of That Buzz Guy Podcast. I'm Curtis Tucker, your host, your buzz guy, all of that good stuff here for another episode. And this week, we're going to be talking about hashtags, uh, probably something not very exciting to most of you. And I'm guessing about half of you out there probably don't even use hashtags. So anyway, that's going to be the subject for this episode. Please listen, even if you're not that interested or you don't think hashtags are going to be beneficial to you. Listen up and uh, hopefully I can give you guys some insight into how uh, hashtags can actually help you. And so I think uh, they can be very beneficial. I uh, did not use them much in the very beginning and probably just within the last maybe year and a half, I've really, really started using them, but um, was not a big user of hashtags uh, until then. So anyway, you guys get ready for that episode. Just want to remind you guys that uh, with a lot of you out there without jobs, this uh, podcast is to help you guys get started, get a side gig going, get a side hustle going and start a side business, making money online, making money from home, and hopefully you'll start making enough money eventually that you can leave your job and work uh, 100% from home, or you can work your way into a uh, side business where you uh, just have a lot of extra income. So that's the purpose of that Buzz Guy podcast. I talk about marketing, branding, social media, web design, and then throw in some of my own personal adventures that I get to go on as that buzz guy, which is kind of fun. So I may throw one of those in here pretty soon and uh, you guys can follow the adventures of me. And then I've also got a lot of other things going. I finally announced that I'm getting ready to write a book. If you've listened to me at all, you know, I really love uh, the 1970s. I grew up in Enid, Oklahoma in the 1970s and had uh, just a one of those memorable childhoods where you ran around all summer, your parents didn't know where you were, you chased tadpoles and listened to the uh, cicadas and just spent time in the creeks and things like that. So I will be writing a book about that, hopefully one day be turned into a movie. And then I've also got uh, some of, you know, the other podcasts, the 70s Buzz podcast going and Enid Buzz, and then also uh, been kind of distracted with trying to get my daughter's business online going. They've gotten a little bitty. Everything in our hometown has kind of started to go back to normal, and so we've kind of gotten busy, but uh, we'll try to get their website online and trying to show them over this uh, whole ordeal for them to start their own business. So they're gonna be selling uh, customized clothing and jewelry and they'll be selling that on their website. So uh, we've gotten the domain name and the website and picked out the WordPress theme. And so I'll give you guys updates on that as well. But let's get right into the uh, hashtag episode. And uh, just uh, if you read, if you go to the blog, that buzzguy.com, and you read the title of this episode, it says, I could have invented the hashtag. So in a way, before hashtags became popular on social media, especially Twitter, Twitter is kind of where uh, people say the hashtag, you know, for, for modern social media, it was born on Twitter, but hashtags were being used way, way before for other things uh, by scientists and stuff, um, but nobody really paid attention to them. And then I, myself, Uh, was using kind of a non-hashtag version of keywords and didn't even know it. And this was before uh, hashtags had become popular. So in the uh, early to mid-2000s when blogging had taken off and I was building my 100 websites, I started two two blogs, which was that uh, curtistucker.com and enabuzz.com. But then I also had uh, almost, and I don't, I never really counted the exact number, but somewhere right around 100 websites. And if you've listened to my story at all, you know that I was building those really quickly, putting a lot of thin content on them, uh, just because it was quicker to get them up and going with thin content. And then I would put Google AdSense and affiliate links and display ads and things like that. So I was, you know, each website being 
a thin content content website, you know, they weren't making a huge amount of money, but when you have a hundred of them and they're all making a little bit of money, that all added up. And so I was making a great living doing that for 10 years. Uh, most of the money came from Google AdSense. And what I began to notice was, um, you know, what I had done was I had spread those 100 websites out onto three different servers. And the reason for that was back in the early 2000s, late 2000s, some web hosting companies uh, were not up 100%. And so you would, every now and then you'd go to your websites and they would be offline and it was because they were just having downtime. And so one of the selling points for web hosting in those days was that they were 99.9% .9 up all the time. But unfortunately, some of us were already committed and had websites on some of those that weren't up 99.9% .9 of the time. And so we had to deal with, uh, sometimes we had servers down, which meant however many websites we have on that server, all of those websites were down. And that was another reason that I split uh, my websites up over three different servers was if one server went down, I still had two thirds of my website still online. And I thought it was a way of tricking Google. I say tricking, but just not, just so Google didn't know they were all coming from the same place, which they Google uh, algorithm was pretty smart and those guys pretty much knew anyway, so they knew. But anyway, the problem was I was using Dreamweaver. All the websites were HTML back in that day and I was using Dreamweaver. The thing about Dreamweaver was it wasn't a content management or data-based web building software. Basically, you had to build every web page one at a time. And once you got, let's say you got a 10 page website done, if you needed to change like the copyright date in the footer, you had to go to all 10 pages and change the copyright date. So it was real slow, monotonous, but it was a beginning. And so we didn't know any better. And, you know, we just, WordPress wasn't out there and, and real popular at that time. But uh, so I would go around and I would click on you know, some of the websites just to make sure they were up and running. And then I could also tell sometimes by just the amount of traffic that they got by my Google AdSense account, because it would tell me how much traffic each website was getting and how much money it was making. But I thought, you know, there's got to be a quicker way for me to be able to see all of my websites uh, really easily. So what I was looking for was a way of grouping them together. Now, I could have used I could have gone down and bookmarked them all, but then all those bookmarks would have been on the browser on my computer. So let's say I went out of town and I was on a different computer and I wanted to check all my websites and I wouldn't have had all my bookmarks. So I was looking for a way of being able to check all of my websites all at one time really quickly uh, without having to use bookmarks. And so it dawned on me one day that, hey, what if I created a unique word that was not on Google anywhere. So uh, I'm a big fan of Scooby-Doo and I like the word zoinks and jinkies. So what I did was at that point I had combined those two words and came up with my own word called zoinkies. So I own zoinkies.com and I I was putting a whole bunch of different uh, stuff on zoinkies.com at that time. So that was one of my 100 websites. And it was just more of a, I think it was just kind of a directory with kind of fun, silly stuff on it. But, um, and, and so Zoinkies was not anywhere to be found on Google. But what I was looking for was a unique word that I could use on all of my websites. So I, I came up with the word Zoinkology, which is the study of the language of Scooby-Doo. I, I made that up entirely on my own. So I came up with the word Zoinkology and I surf, searched Google and it didn't appear anywhere. You could not, it didn't show up in any of the results. So I knew I had a word that if I put it on a web page, the web page that I put it on, that would be the only web page that would show up. So I went to all of my 100 websites and I put the word Zoinkology at the very bottom, what would be considered the footer today. 
Uh, it was the very last line, and I so I just typed in the word Zoinkology. And if I've got several websites still out there, if you uh, go to those, uh, the word Zoinkology is still there. Some of them I haven't updated in I think maybe 10 years. They're still sitting there. But I closed most of the 100 websites down. But anyway, so so when I got all that done, I could go to Google wherever I was on whatever computer I was on, and I could type in the word Zoinkology and all of my websites, homepages would pop up. So, you know, I could type in Zoicology and 100 pages would pop up and it was all of my, and then I could go through the results on Google and click on them and be able to tell whether they were up or, you know, online or not. And then uh, if I needed to, you know, go to one really quickly, uh, I could go to it. And so, so basically it was kind of a cool deal. So the reason I tell you that is that in a way is how hashtags work and why you would want to use a hashtag in social media, on a blog post, uh, in, in that type of deal. And so what it does is, uh, so the difference between what I was doing, I was using a keyword, a unique keyword, but I had to find a keyword that wasn't already on the internet somewhere. Whereas hashtags, you put the pound sign, the hashtag sign, the number sign, whatever you want to call it, you put that before a word and that makes it a hashtag. And so that was used on Twitter and uh, became popular on Twitter. And so hashtags are used. So when you think of hashtags and where they're used mostly, and in the beginning it was Twitter. Twitter's uh, the biggest place to use them. The second biggest place to use hashtags is Instagram. So those are the two main places that you get the most use out of uh, hashtags, Twitter and Instagram. But now people are slowly starting to incorporate them into Pinterest, LinkedIn, YouTube, and even Facebook. Now, Facebook almost completely ignores them, but it doesn't, and, and don't use hashtags on Facebook like you would on Twitter or Instagram, but it doesn't hurt to add one or two hashtags at the end of a Facebook post uh, just because you never know what, you know, what could happen. So the, again, the reason to use a hashtag is to group uh, posts, thoughts all together. So when somebody types in that hashtag on Twitter, they can search for those hashtags on Twitter or Instagram and everything related will so it's basically like using google when you use the google search engine to type in something that's how hashtags are used on social media and so um you know basically like i said a hashtag is just a word or words now it, it doesn't have to be just one word and it is preceded by the pound sign the thing about hashtags is um uh two, 2007 was when uh, they were first introduced by Chris Messina uh, to Twitter, and he uh, went to Twitter officials and suggested that they start using the pound symbol before grouped words, and that would bring tweets together. And way, way back in the day when uh, I was with a lot of cartoonists, we would go on Twitter because at that time, Twitter was really uh, right behind MySpace, Twitter was kind of the main uh, social media website back then. And so every now and then we would get out of our forum that we would be in and we'd say, hey, you know, on Tuesday night, let's meet on Twitter and let's use the hashtag, you know, nighttime cartoonist. And so you would type something and then you would use a hashtag nighttime cartoonist and all the other cartoonists would type in hashtag nighttime cartoonist and then everybody's tweets that we had been tweeting all night would pop up and so you could just follow that thread and we would be talking to each other and seeing what each other's thoughts were and people would be sharing their cartoons so it was just a way of kind of subdividing yourself into just a small group on twitter where nobody else knew that hashtag or was using that hashtag and so nobody really you know, got into our group. So, so be careful with the hashtags that you use. If you're going to do something like that, don't use something real popular or you're going to end up with uh, thousands of people possibly in your group. So if you're going to do something that you want it to be a little bit private or something like that, then use more unique type 
uh, hashtags, and that would be like basically adding numbers or extra words to it. So um, that uh, that's kind of what a hashtag is. Uh, the thing about a hashtag is it's uh, the pound sign and then all letters. There's no other symbols. There's no spaces. There's no dashes. Don't uh, add anything. So if you're going to use the hashtag, um, you know, Enid, Oklahoma, which is my hometown. It's just all hashtag Enid, Oklahoma. There's no, there's no space in between, and so um, you can you can combine, you know, up to you know however many words you want. But uh, hashtag etiquette says don't make the words too long, and so keep them, you know, manageable. You don't want too many words in there. Uh, where to use hashtags? Um, again, they're most popular on Twitter and Instagram and I would use them on all the other uh, social media platforms and even on your blog. So on your blog posts, you can actually divide your blog posts into categories or tags and tags are really kind of like hashtags. But what I do is I not only put my posts in categories and tags, but then at the end of the blog post, I'll add hashtags just because if somebody is on Google and they're uh, typing in hashtag Enid Oklahoma, then my post will pop up. And I don't use a whole lot of them on the blog, but again, it's not really going to hurt anything to add an extra hashtag here and there on the things that you're doing. Uh, how do hashtags help you? Well, they help in a lot of different ways. And what they do is they attract new followers to your social media and they also bring like-minded people into what you're doing. So if you are a, let's say you're a sunrise photographer and you take a picture of the sunrise and you put that on Instagram and you use the hashtag sunrise photographer, if there's people out there that are wanting to connect or look at sunrise photographs and they type in and they search for that hashtag and they go through all of them, then you're, you your post is going to pop up and they're going to maybe follow you or like you so they can, you know, let's say they're wanting to follow 50 sunrise photographers. Well, that's how they find you is because you use that hashtag. So that's why hashtags uh, are important and that's how you use them. So on Instagram, Twitter, those are the type of things that uh, can build your following actually rather quickly. So on my Enid Buzz account on Instagram, I don't follow anybody. Um, you know, a lot of people will do what they say, um, like for like or follow for follow, where if somebody follows you, you follow them back. So we, you end up with 3,000 followers, but you're following 3,000 people. Well, when I started um, the Enid Buzz Instagram account, I wasn't really into Instagram and I just thought I needed to have the account. So I started posting pictures of Enid and I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. But after a while, it really started growing, but I didn't spend any time, you know, looking at other people's stuff. And I still don't. I still don't ever use Instagram to see what other people are posting very often. And so it got to the point where now I'm over 7,000 followers on the Enid Buzz Instagram account but I don't follow anybody except my own personal Instagram account. But um, anyway, it's it. But what I was doing was towards you know maybe the last year or two was I started using the hashtags, uh, hashtag you know pound sign Enid, pound sign Enid OK, pound sign Enid Oklahoma, and then maybe whatever the deal was like it might be traffic or. Uh, pound sign Enid traffic or Enid sunrise or Oklahoma skies. And I think just using those different hashtags, uh, it grew my following, you know, pretty quickly. So, so hashtags can really uh, help people find you. Uh, if you've got a brand, a slogan or a thought, um, use those hashtags um, like uh, for Enid buzz or that buzz guy, I might use hashtag buzz life or that buzz guy. Uh, so think of words that have to do with your branding or basically, you know, just use your brand or your slogan. And a lot of organizations, uh, you know, like like right now, we've got all this stuff going on. A very popular hashtag right now is Black Lives Matter. And what that does is when you use that hashtag on Twitter or 
Facebook is it brings up all the other people that are concerned with what's going on and you can follow what they've got going on. And so it is so popular right now that uh, you're going to run into a lot, a lot of stuff. And sometimes when a hashtag gets so popular, there's so many posts or tweets that you can't even find them all. There's just too many. And so uh, you could spend hours, you know, going through certain uh, hashtags. But anyway, that's uh, uh, how people use them to drive uh, social issues is, is like Black Lives Matter. And uh, it can really build your following and build the, the people following a, a cause. So that's another uh, way that you would use hashtags. Um, they also, so also, let's say I'm doing a blog post on Facebook and I'm kind of yimmering and yammering like I'm doing right now on this podcast. But at the end of it, I say, I use the hashtag, you know, entrepreneur, you know, basically that hashtag kind of sums up everything that I'm trying to say in the post. And so when somebody comes along and they look at my blog post or, or my post on Facebook, uh, maybe they don't even have time to read it or they don't take time to read it. But if they see that hashtag entrepreneur, they start to connect the word entrepreneur with me and it builds my personal brand and my reputation as an entrepreneur. So there are certain hashtags that you want to become associated with. And those are the ones that you want to use uh, on almost everything that you do, like your blog, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, you know, and all, all the other stuff. So pick out uh, the hashtags that help build your brand or help you connect or help you find your audience. And those are the ones that you're going to want to stick with. Um, again, your brand name can be uh, your own hashtag. Um, watch out. Uh, the, the, so here was a cool thing. Um, talking about uh, web hosting back uh, when I was trying to find so one of the hosting companies that I used back at that time in the mid 2000s was down a lot so I was like okay I'm going to move all my websites to a different server and so I was trying to figure out what server what company I should go to so what I did was I went to Twitter and I typed in hashtag like hostgator and every tweet that somebody had done and hashtagged with HostGator popped up. And I and so HostGator came up and I think it had a lot of good reviews, you know, said very helpful, they get back with you, uh, hardly ever down, blah, blah, blah. But there was one some company, and I can't remember what it was, but I typed in their hashtag and there was like complaints, they don't get back with you, the, web, the server's always down. And so be careful and search your own Hashtag. So go to Twitter, and if you're using your brand or your company name, go search those hashtags on Twitter and see what people are saying about you and your company. And if there's problems there or if there's something you need to have corrected, then you can address that on Twitter. So anyway, that is one way. Another way that you can use uh, hashtags is to monitor what's going on with uh, what you have going on. Um, using the right hashtag uh, can lead to a lot more clicks when you're linking to an article uh, back to your website from Facebook or Twitter. If you use uh, you know the right hashtag and people see you know entrepreneur work from home, um, you know marketing tips, then they're more apt to click on that link to go to the article because they they see those related hashtags which. You know, maybe you've got some really funky title to the title of that article and people aren't understanding exactly what that article is going to be about. But if they see those hashtags with, again, those words like entrepreneur, work from home, um, things like that, then they're going to be more apt to click on that link and go to the article on your blog. So lots of different ways to use hashtags. And uh, so now I've got uh, 10 different or actually 11, 11 ways to use hashtags effectively. So, you know, you want to make sure you get the best use out of the hashtags that you use. Number one, the shorter, the better. And it just, uh, you know, that's, you know, 
speaks for itself. You know, just try to make them the shorter the better. Long, strung out hashtags are harder to remember if you're wanting people to remember your hashtag. So if you've got a really, really, really long one, you're probably not going to find that that many people are going to Twitter or Instagram and typing in a long array of words to find you. So use a combination of shorter hashtags. Um, so keep everything short, um, and that makes it a lot easier to remember and you're going to uh, hit a lot more people use relevant words and so don't if you're so like there was no sense in using to use the hashtag zoinkology on instagram because i assure you nobody knows what zoinkology is and nobody would be searching for that on um Instagram. So use relevant words you want to use. If you're an entrepreneur, you definitely want to use the word entrepreneur and then maybe entrepreneur life and then maybe work for yourself. And so make sure that the uh, hashtags are all relevant to each other and uh, not some obscure words or phrases that uh, nobody's going to be searching for anyway. Uh, now, there are ways, uh, like I talked before, of using non-relevant hashtags, which so number three is use non-relevant uh, words or hashtags. And that would be if you're wanting to get into Twitter and you're wanting to kind of have a private conversations between a small group of you, you might use like the hashtag, you know, Enid uh, Entrepreneurs, you know, or Enid Entrepreneurs 2020. And then that way uh, somebody, you know, mistakenly isn't going to come along and pop into your tweets. But if you send out that message to everybody in your group, hey, use this hashtag on Twitter, then they're all going to be able to find each other. So that's when you would use a non-relevant uh, keyword or hashtag. Uh, don't stuff your hashtags. Uh, you'll see, especially on Instagram, uh, because there is, I think there's a limit. They give you so many a lot of them do. They'll, uh, the social media sites will give you a certain number of hashtags that you can use. Some people max it out. I, I wouldn't max it out. It looks awful. It looks messy. Um, you know, if your, you know, subject is is covering you know 20 hashtags, then it's too broad. You need to bring it down a little bit, make it a little more niche, a little more specific. So, um, and I don't know what the magic number is. I wouldn't say that for every Instagram post you do, use 10, you know, because there might be one that you use that you only need three, but then you might do uh, post something where you need 15. So, um, I think somewhere I saw where um, a pretty good number is somewhere around seven. I rarely, personally, I don't use, you know, and again, I didn't used to use any, but now I use, uh, you know, usually around five, I would say. Um, and again, I just continue to use the same ones over and over, and they're relevant to what I'm talking about. Um, you know, in the early 2000s, people used um, gimmicky keywords on their websites to, to fool Google into coming to their website where they would try to sell Viagra or some type of drug or something and you know they'd say they are you know a uh, baby crib site but when you got there you know they they were selling you something else so that's the same way with hashtags don't lure somebody to your post by putting entrepreneur when they get there you're trying to sell them life insurance you know uh, don't uh, don't stuff so um in stuffing, you might be using hashtags that aren't really relevant. So um, don't use too many, uh, limit, and then be sure you might check, uh, do a little Google search and find out what the max hashtags are uh, that you can use and avoid looking like a spammer by using too many. So um, sprinkle in a couple of the most popular hashtags. There's a lot of places where you can search for what the uh, popular hashtags are. One really popular hashtag is called, uh, you know, um, pound sign me. And so a lot of people on Instagram or wherever, they know that somebody is taking a, taking a selfie. Now, why they don't use, use the word selfie, I don't know. But so, um, so let's say you are an entrepreneur and you're out doing, you know, let's say maybe you're at a show and you're trying to drum up business uh, for being an entrepreneur, whatever you're trying to sell. Um, so you might take a picture of yourself and you might hashtag, you know, entrepreneur 
um, at at entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneur show, entrepreneur booth, and then you might want to throw in uh, hashtag me, and that way, because it is a selfie, and then somebody may come, and um, you know, if somebody's looking for an entrepreneur, they may want to see what you look like. Anyway, they're just uh, every now and then um, sprinkle in some of the more popular hashtags. I what I would do. So here, here's a quick tip: um, is whatever your hashtags are that you use a lot type them all out and paste them somewhere where you can get to them really quick. There's no sense in retyping all of them over and over and over again. Just copy and paste. And so when you go to Instagram or Twitter or uh, Facebook or your blog, you can copy your hashtags real quick and paste them and then you're not having to retype those all the time. And then, but I would have several different little paragraphs of different hashtags that you want to use for certain posts and then also have uh, scattered in some of the more popular tags. And like I said, then you can do some searches and you'll find out what a lot of the most popular tags are out there. And, and I've got a list of them. I'll mention them here in a second and you'll kind of get the gist of, of what's popular out there. So sprinkle some of those in and they help. They will help you get uh, a lot of extra traffic. Now, if the person coming to your post is not interested in that subject that you're you know, really talking about, then they probably won't follow you. Uh, find a trending hashtag. So let's say, um, you know, let's say you've got something that would really help people with, uh, like, let's say you sell sign making, uh, you, you know, boards and markers and, and things. And so you might use, you know, Black Lives Matter and um, sign maker or sign supplies or um, protest signs or but what you're doing is you're using a trending hashtag um, to get people to come because people that are going to these protests might be looking for the things that you're selling it's kind of a weird uh, example but that might be one way uh, just trying to give you an example of uh, using trends whatever's hot you know um, now don't use it a trending hashtag that has nothing to do you know, with what you're talking about, what you're doing. But if you can find hashtags that are trending, that are related, uh, so like Shark Tank, um, you know, I don't know, it's not really super trending, but it's kind of a hot topic. So as an entrepreneur, um, you might use the hashtag Shark Tank entrepreneur, and then maybe you're, you've written a blog post about your thoughts on the latest episode of Shark Tank, or I'm just trying to give you guys some ideas. Uh, some of these aren't the best of ideas, but that would be where you might use uh, a trending hashtag. Um, search for hashtags for related uh, words, keywords, and hashtags that other people are doing. So basically just go to uh, if you're a photographer, go to other photographers, Instagram, Twitter accounts and see what hashtags they're using. And you can quickly come up with a really big list, um, see which ones they use all the time, see which ones they use some of the time, um, copy their hashtags, paste them into your, your uh, growing list of hashtags. And uh, that's a real good way of picking up on some really good hashtags. Some, sometimes I'll run across like an entrepreneur or somebody and I'll see a hashtag that uh, I never thought of. And then sometimes, so on Instagram and I think on Twitter, when you start to, when you use the hashtag and you start to type in a word, a lot of times you'll get a drop down where they will, like on Google, they will suggest, um, hashtags. And so sometimes you can look through there and, and see one that you might not have thought of. And so use those, the ones that they, if they're suggesting it to you, that means it's probably one, a hashtag that's probably searched for really popular. And so um, use all of those that you can as well. Um, avoid hashtags already being used. Um, if a keyword is already part of a popular hashtag, don't try to override it with your own use. You'll oh, so yeah, so um, you know, don't try to reinvent. Uh, a ha if a hashtag is already being used for something, don't try to change. Um, you know, like Shark Tank. Don't 
try to um, use the key, the hashtag Shark Tank by selling tanks that have sharks in them. You know, like a, you know, you're you're. It's going to be a losing cause. People that are going to the hashtag Shark Tank are, you know, wanting to go see something about the show. And so again, I got some really bad examples tonight, but uh, I'm I'm. I'm not reading this directly off of a blog post. I'm kind of trying to give you guys some ideas. But anyway, so just be careful of, uh, you know, using a hashtag that's already being used for something else and trying to use it for something um, that it's not because you'll get people coming and uh, you're probably going to annoy them. It's kind of like spamming if they come to your uh, page or whatever and it's not what they thought it was going to be. Um, and number nine, I already told you, is type those out and paste them. I have a text file that, um, you know, once it's on, it, it updates in the cloud. So if I add hashtags to it on my computer, uh, eventually it gets to my phone and my iPad and then my laptop. And so I've got these uh, hashtags that are in this text file that follow me wherever I go. And so if I do a uh, post on Twitter or you know, Facebook or wherever, whatever I'm doing, I've got those hashtags handy and I can just copy and paste them, which makes everything go a lot quicker. And also that uh, eliminates you misspelling um, hashtag. So a misspelled hashtag is like a non-existent hashtag. Um, just not going to do you any good if you don't spell your hashtags right. Um, Let's see, uh, use hashtags for events. And so, um, you know, that's uh, if you're having a conference coming up or a concert, you know, um, Garth concert or um, uh, hashtag conference 2020. I mean, uh, a lot of people will, will create, and that's what you should do. If you're having an event coming up, something in your hometown, something that you're trying to promote, come up with your own hashtag for that event and then use that on all the material, letterhead, um, emails, uh, brochures, uh, business cards, anything that you send out, use the hashtag that you want to be associated with that event and then people will type in that hashtag and they will start to meet and network with other people that are going to that event. And then they also can find more information. You can just post something out there. You know, you could even go to some weird account, add some information and use that hashtag and people are going to find that information because of that hashtag, but it might be important information to them that they needed to know. So um, definitely use hashtags for events. And those are kind of like temporary hashtags. Once the event's over, you may never use that hashtag again. So uh, those are really cool, but they really help people connect and start to network and know who's going to be an event or not. Uh, last one, number 11. Um, location hashtags. Uh, I've seen people say to use them and not to use them. Uh, I definitely would say use them. So if you're a uh, Enid photographer, why would you not use Enid for the hashtag Enid photographer on Instagram? Uh, people are looking, you know, let's say their kid needs senior pictures. Uh, there's no, there's not phone books anymore. And if you do find a phone book, there's not going to be, you're not going to find photographers in it. I guarantee you. So, uh, you could go to Google and uh, you're going to get some results. Some, sometimes you get results that uh, are out of town. Some of the businesses are closed. Um, as far as business listings, sometimes Google is not the best. Sometimes people don't know how to do their Google listings and so they're not even listed. So uh, a lot of people are using uh, social media to their, do their searches. That, that's why we're talking about hashtags. That's why hashtags have become really important because people are starting to use, people are starting to learn that they can use Twitter, they can use Facebook, they can use Instagram as search engines. So there's always a search box on those social media sites that you can type in and have things pulled up that you're searching for. And I, I, for years, people didn't realize that they didn't. So for years, if I needed to know something, I always went to Twitter typed in what you know so so sometimes facebook would go down and i couldn't get it to to come up well because it was down i couldn't go ask somebody else on facebook hey are you having trouble with your page so what i would always do is i would go to twitter and i would type in is facebook down 
and all of a sudden all these tweets would come up and it'd be people laughing and saying lol facebook is down again facebook has crashed blah 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 but um, people don't realize that you can probably get quicker news on twitter than anywhere else in the world even faster than cnn and fox news and 24-hour news on the television um, if you hear of something if somebody posts something on facebook or on twitter or you hear somebody talking in a grocery store or you're seeing something happening in your hometown, go post it on Twitter or go search for it on Twitter and I guarantee you more times than not you're going to find information about it faster on Twitter than anywhere else on the internet. So um, popular hashtags. Now these lists are all over the place and there's a lot of websites that have trending hashtags. Um, sometimes you can put in subjects and they will give you the hashtags that um, relate to those subjects but here are some of the most popular hashtags and again these are maybe the ones that you want to sprinkle into some of your posts and I'm guessing that uh, most of these probably came from Instagram possibly Twitter but um, and I'm so I'm just going to tell you the words uh, gym summer workout if you didn't know Working out and being a fitness person, being a coach, is huge on Instagram. And so if you've ever thought about wanting to be a fitness coach and you don't know where to get started or you don't have a gym in your town or you don't want to go work for a gym, set up a camera in your living room, start telling people how to work out, use the hashtags gym, workout, and then use whatever. So let's say um, workout Enid or Jim Enid, you know, add your location onto those and you will start to build an audience, especially if you're nice looking and you're in shape, you can build an entire business around hashtags on Instagram. So that's, so th that's why those are so popular. Um, happiness, motivation are two popular hashtags. Again, people are looking for motivation online, especially on Twitter and Instagram. They like to be um, inspired. They like to be happy. So if you uh, take a picture of a, I took a picture of a squirrel the other day, a really close up picture. So I might use the hashtag um, squirrel, squirrel life, and then happiness. And just because it's a happy picture of a squirrel. So um, again, that's why sometimes you sprinkle in these really popular um, keywords because it gives you, you know, if somebody's searching for all of the posts for happiness, yours is going to pop up and you might actually get a uh, additional follower that way. Uh, more hashtags, life, cool, hot, music, hair, beauty. So hair and beauty, another uh, big category on social media is people showing how to do hair, giving tips on putting makeup on. If you've ever want to be uh, a cosmetologist or somebody that helps people with their makeup, you can uh, do that, especially on YouTube. You could start an entire YouTube channel where you do videos of how to uh, put on makeup and then what you do is you like let's say you do a 15 or 30 minute uh, video on YouTube you cut out 30 seconds of that and you put that on Instagram and then that Instagram post with the hashtags beauty makeup beauty tips makeup tips um, hair those hashtags draw people to that 30 second video that 30 second video throws people to your YouTube channel. So you see how that all works. It's all, it's all, I don't know if you'd call that a funnel, but it's kind of, you're using these broad hashtag terms to bring people into your social media account. Your social media account is where you drive people to your website. And like I always say, if, you, if you've listened to me at all, everybody needs a website no matter what. You can be the most popular person on Instagram. If you don't have a website, you are going to lose at the end. So a couple more, uh, landscape, photography, inspiration, design, beautiful, best of the day, goals, style, swag, health, funny, blogger. Blogger's a good hashtag. So when people go to Instagram and maybe they want to start following a blogger, but they don't know who to follow, they could type in, let's say, the two hashtags, photography, 
and blogger and everybody that's using those two hashtags will pop up and they can instantly find photography bloggers and if they look at your Instagram or your Twitter account and they like your photographs and what you're saying, they like your personality, then they're going to go to your website and maybe subscribe to your website or your YouTube channel and they might start following you there or they may find your Facebook page and follow you on a Facebook page. So again, this all works together and you know, again, whatever hashtag you used on social media, go ahead and use those on the end of the blog on your a blog post on the end of your blog and that way it kind of ties everything together and they see those repeated hashtags which they start to associate with you. A couple more photo, food, fun, happy, artist, cute, follow for follow, and art. So you can kind of see there's kind of a, a genre, a feel of the most popular hashtags and a lot of those are broad terms which makes it easy for you guys to sprinkle into your more niche site so um, that's uh, basically the episode on hashtags just a quick reminder if you guys haven't started something or this is the first episode that you've caught of me um, you can start right now soon turn this off go to YouTube you can start a YouTube channel with just your camera set it up like I have them just got it on a little tripod open you up a free YouTube channel start recording yourself talking right into the camera or do something silly or teach somebody something in your garage or do uh, your fa your makeup uh, in front of the camera or go do a certain workout, um, some yoga, record that, put it on your YouTube channel, uh, use hashtags at the end of it, use the right uh, titles and the right description, use keywords and those to get people to do that. And so right now, tonight, within Within an hour, you can have your own YouTube channel started. Go to Blogger, Wix, Weebly, um, um, Tumblr. You can start your own free blog. Uh, you can set that up right now. You can have it set up within 15, 30 minutes. Start blogging. It doesn't matter what you're going to blog about. Um, if you'll just start blogging, uh, you'll start to get used to um, what blogging is, how to upload pictures what to type, um, learning if you misspell words, but it just gets you going. Do that for a couple of weeks until you finally decide what you're gonna blog about, but free, anybody can do it right now. If you wanna become a podcaster, all you have to do is download the Anchor app on your phone, sign up for an account, start talking into your phone. There's no microphone, you don't need anything else. Um, once you upload that podcast that you just did, um, put all your information in there and uh, I believe you know I think you have to have an Apple account but they will upload your blog or your podcast to iTunes and all of uh, most of the major uh, podcasting apps and platforms out there so uh, those are kind of the three main video written audio that you guys right now can start right now get started don't wait um, I don't want you guys to look back a year from now and be listening to this podcast and say, gosh, I wish I'd started a year ago. That's what I did. I've been wanting to start that Buzz Guy podcast for at least a year or two. Um, I've been doing the 70s Buzz podcast for three years, but I always wanted to start my own to help people and talk about stuff. I just didn't know exactly, I didn't know if uh, doing it kind of a personal journal would be funner and people would listen or if uh, I should help people, you know, do the things that I'm doing because I want everybody to work from home and have the freedom to not have to go um, to a job. And so because of the COVID-19 thing and so many people being at home and not having a job, I thought, well, this is a perfect time to teach people how to start a podcast, how to start a blog, how to start a YouTube channel. And it is so easy. Uh, if I had these tools when I was a kid in the 1970s, wowzer. So you guys have the tools now. There's no middleman. There's nobody blocking you. There's nobody telling you you can't start a uh, YouTube channel where you sing and uh, you know just ask Justin Bieber about that. So anyway you guys get out there do something don't wait. Um, again I'm starting a book there's uh, I can self-publish that there's no middleman I can you know just do that uh, on my own so there's so much opportunity out there you guys need to grab a hold of it right now get your hashtags in line and please start using hashtags um, hopefully you've listened to this if you've never used hashtags and you're listening to this 
I hope it wasn't boring, but uh, please start using hashtags. And I promise you, after about a month, you're going to start to see your numbers of followers go up, especially on Instagram and Twitter. And it's just going to be because you're using the hashtags that they're interested in. So get out there, get busy, get started today. Uh, hope everybody has a wonderful uh, weekend coming up. Be well, be safe, be kind. I'll see you.